Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm going to be reviewing my five star predictions. Now I did my last round of five star predictions quite a while ago and I would love to say that it has taken me this long to review them because I wanted to let these books sit with me and fully evaluate if they were a five star read. The reality is it just took me a really long time to get around to reading all five of them and then also it took me a really long time to sit down to film this video so. <laughs> what I have discovered after doing a few rounds of five star predictions now and I will do a next round, what I have discovered is that I'm really good at picking four star predictions for myself. There is just something about a five star prediction that I feel like cannot be predicted which kind of you know defeats any level of success I might have with this because <laughs> oftentimes I can't really tell you exactly what the distinction was between a four and a five star review like some people are very precise and have like criteria with which they measure their reviews on all of my reviews are based on like the vibes and the five star vibes are very particular it feels like for something to be a five star just like everything needs to be aligned it needs to be the exact right reading circumstances I have to to, you know spend time with the book but also not read it too slowly I can't read it too quickly the stars have to be aligned I've got to be at the right point in my menstrual cycle like it feels like all of these things are playing a part but I am going to take you through the five books that I anticipated being five stars talk to you about why I thought they would be five stars and whether or not they were so kicking things off with Love in Colour by Balu Babalola now the reason I thought this was going to be five stars is because I've been very into my romance in recent times so these are romance short stories they are mythical tales from around the world retold. Another big tick. Also, it's not just Greek mythology, which has been a real trend in recent years. There have been so many Greek myth retellings. But there's also lots of mythology in here that I really wasn't familiar with. And I was totally digging that. Also, the author seems like a lot of fun on Twitter. She seems like my kind of gal. So that's why I was anticipating it being a five star read. But alas, I was an idiot because of course a short story collection isn't going to be a five star read because naturally there's going to be some stories in here that I loved more than others. There were some that I found hits and there were some that I found misses for me personally. So it just wasn't going to be that five star kind of vibe. But I did love it. I thought it was a great collection of stories. It just wasn't a five star. Then we had The Lock-In by Phoebe Lookhurst. Now this is a proof copy of course. The final book is now out. Now I felt like I had an unfair advantage with this because I had already read about a third of this novel when it was going around in submission. It was submitted to the publishing house that I used to work at. I read like the first third of it and absolutely loved it. I believe what I said in response to the submission was inject this book into my veins. And this book had all of the ingredients of something that I was gonna love. This book is set in a London house share and we have two girls who are really best friends and the guy that they found on Spare Room, as is so often the case in a London house share. And basically, to give you the premise of this book very quickly, they end up locked in the attic together. Not just the tree housemates, but also the Tinder date of one of the girls from the night before who like stayed over. Very awkward. But then the other girl realises that she may have some sort of connection with this guy from the past. Love it. That set up, oh, Leanne Catnip. But there was just something about the reveal of the connection between those two characters from the past. It was just like, oh, okay. I found it a little bit disappointing. It felt like I really enjoyed the whole journey of this book. And then when it was about to get to like the climax, the big reveal, it was a bit like, oh, okay. In saying all that, I loved this book. I thought it was really great. It was just that little, that little bit of the ending that prevented it from being a five star for me. Kick the Moon by Muhammad Khan. I was basing this on the fact that I gave five stars to Muhammad Khan's previous book, I Am Thunder. In this book, our main character is a teenage boy who doesn't feel like he quite fits in. He doesn't feel like he fits in with his guy friends. He doesn't feel like he quite fits in working at his dad's shop. All this kid really wants to do is make comic books and there's also a huge amount of pressure on him because his GCSEs are coming up and he finds a kindred spirit in Kelly, someone he feels like he can finally be himself with. However, our main character's friends are just bad vibes, like they're not good guys, they're very much caught up in like toxic masculinity and our main character is kind of figuring out how to navigate that, like how he stands up against that. Really great book, tackles some really important topics for teens that I think are so often neglected in this kind of storytelling. I think Muhammad Khan is such an important voice in teen fiction, but it just didn't hit the same way that I Am Thunder did. And it wasn't a five star, it was a very strong four. Now for a little bit of non fiction getting off by Erica Garza why wasn't this five stars <laughs> I can't just I can't quite put my finger 
on why this wasn't five stars. This is a very honest memoir about the author's experiences of sex and porn addiction and I think that is something we are so often associating with men when of course women are going through this as well and I thought the way that the author was so honest in this book was really admirable and really important and I was really thankful for her sharing her experiences. She's really vulnerable in sharing how something that should be pleasurable, something that shouldn't be fun, something that isn't shameful escalated into something that was having a detrimentally negative effect on her life. What circumstances led her to develop that addiction and how she's been dealing with it throughout her life? I thought this book was really accomplished and I'm really grateful that it exists. I think maybe I would have given five stars to a book that dealt with several people's experiences of this book and was giving a more wide depiction of what it was like as much as I appreciated the intimacy with which we saw this one woman's experience. I wanted to hear different points of view. If that book exists, please point me in the direction of it. And my final five star prediction was a Snowflake. When I read this book, I would have absolutely said it was five stars. And I'm trying to weigh up, is it still five stars? Has it stood the test of time in that way where I feel like it is five stars? And what's pulling me down is I don't know if I would reread this book. Now in saying that, I never reread anything, so I don't know why that's a criteria with which I'm judging a five star book. But I think often when I close a five star book, I have this feeling of, I would love to read that again. Even though I never will, because I don't reread anything ever, because I'm just like, I get distracted by shiny new things. I still have that like feeling that I would want to go back to it, you know? And I don't know if I feel compelled to reread Snowflake. So Snowflake is about a young Irish woman who is moving from her rural community to go to college or university um, in Trinity College in Dublin. So it's about that change in circumstances for her, her navigating her new life, meeting new people, becoming an adult, that really confusing time when you're like 18 years old and you kind of have to become an adult but you, you're still a kid. But it's also about the very complicated mental health circumstances in her whole family, particularly you know her own experiences but also her mother's experiences of mental health struggles and her uncle's experiences of mental health struggles and everyone has like their own stuff going on. It's very complicated and I thought the depictions of all of those unique struggles were done really really well. Not only those like significant large mental health struggles but also the experiences of our main character just navigating her newfound adulthood and navigating new friendships and her sex life and you know her coming to understand herself in the way that we all have to when we come of age. I do think this book was really great and of this five it's definitely the one that was rated the highest. There was lots of jokes about Gilmore Girls in it and when I was reading it it was in like the depths of my Gilmore Girls phase which you know it did help. Was it a five stars? I feel like if it's not an enthusiastic yes that it was absolutely five stars and it's just a no. Is it like a 4.5? Why do these ratings matter? I would love to hear if you have any criteria with which you judge five star reads because I who knows what I'm doing out here? I don't know. What am I basing this on? It's just based on vibes. Snowflake was one of my favourite books that I read last year. It did make my top 10. thought it was really great. I just don't find myself thinking about it a lot, talking about it a lot, recommending it a lot. I don't have a compulsion to reread it. But when I did read it, I felt like I had a really great time. If I was compiling a list of my favourite books of all time, it would not make the list. But just because it's not one of my favourite books of all time doesn't mean it's not a 5 star. It's definitely like a 4.5. Like definitely a 4.5, but is it a 5? I don't feel like I'm going to come to any conclusion in this video. So I'm just going to leave it there. I'm not going to come to a conclusion. But if you want to find out more about any of the books I've mentioned, they will be linked down below in the description, as will all of my social media links if you want to connect with me elsewhere. If you have any thoughts on any of the books I've mentioned, do leave me a comment down below so I know that you're here. And if you don't have anything in particular to comment, leave me a snowflake emoji, because that feels very apt. I will be doing another round of five star predictions, so you have that to look forward to, because even though I've learned that I'm not going to predict five five star books. I will continue to try. That is it for me today. I hope you guys are doing well and I will speak to you in my next video.